Hello, my name is Lily Jones. I'm one of the USF Infectious Disease Fellows. And today my topic is going to be about what's news in the antibiotic pipeline. Now, this started out a long time ago in a country far, far away. A patient was hospitalized in New Delhi and they was found to be infected with Klebsiella pneumonia that possessed the NDM1 gene. Actually, it's not that long ago. It was found in 2008. And uh, it was re first reported in the journal Antimicrobial Therapy, as you can see here. Since then, um, the NDM1 producer's genes have been found across the globe. As you can see here, it's a um, place that have the infections. In the yellow star is um, place that have um, 6 to 50 cases found in um, South Africa and also place that have uh, from 51 to 200 cases was found in uh, Bangladesh and the United Kingdoms as well. Now this table is adapted from the National Healthcare Safety Network reported from 2009 to 2010 as you can see, the uh, persistent uh, resistant isolate found um, first in MRSA is 54.6%. In uh, Enterococcus faecium that possess the Van A genes is dramatically rising at 82.6%. In Klebsiella that possess the extended spectrum um, um, cephalosporin genes is also on the rise along with the carbapenemase, the MDM war, uh, multi-drug resistant one. Um, as you can see, acinetobacter is also um, significantly resistant at 62.6 and 67.6%. Now this is a um, timeline of when antibiotic was first introduced into usage. This is the year that sulfonamides became available from between 1930 and 1940, and you can, you can see that soon after it was released, the antibiotic resistance was readily observed. Same thing with penicillin that was released soon after 1940, and after 1945, we start seeing penicillin resistant isolate. As you can see, the trend continue on. nineteen sixty when methicillin was introduced soon after that we observed MRSA. Uh, similarly with even with Linezolid that was released in the year two thousand and within a couple of years we start seeing Linezolid resistant isolate. And it's the same hold true for Daptomycin as well. Antibiotic resistance has now became a major topic in the media. As you can see, BBC have reported, same thing with the US, we are losing the war against antibiotic resistant superbugs. So what is IDSA doing about this? Um, as you know, their policy is the antimicrobial resistant is recognized one of the greatest threat to the human health worldwide based on study of the cost of infections caused by antibiotic resistant pathogen versus antibiotic acceptable pathogens. The annual cost to the US healthcare system of antibiotic resistant infections is 21 to 34 billion and more than 8 billion additional hospital days. This statement was um, documented in April of 2011. So what are we doing about this? Dr. Henry Chambers, the chair of um, Infectious Disease Society of America Antimicrobial Resistant Committee, stated that in the past, the 10 by 20 goals would have been considered modest, but today with the barriers to approval of nine additional antibiotics by 2020 seem unsurmountable. As you can see, the reality is alarming. Infection caused by antibiotic-resistant bacteria, the escape pathogens, continue to increase. 
new antimicrobial agents are greatly needed to treat infection caused by gram-negative bacilli, resistant to current, currently available agents. With the withdrawal of several large pharmaceutical companies from antibacterial research and development, and um, IDSA proposed a 10 by 20 initiative in 2010, which this, let's take a quick look at the escape bugs. We have Enterococcus faecium, Staph aureus, Klebsiella pneumonia, Acinetobacter baumannii, Pseudomonas originosa, and Enterobacter species, or Enterobacteriaceaceus. This is a review of the different systemic antibacterial drug that was approved since 2003. Uh, in 2003, we approved gemifloxacin, daptomycin, in 2004, telitromycin, 2005, tegacycline, 2007, doripenem, 2009, televensin, and 2010, septaline. As you can see, there's not a whole lot that being approved since 2003. So the 10 by 20 initiative by IDSA is called for the development and regulatory approval of 10 novel, efficacious, and safe systemic antibiotics by the year 2020. As of early 2013, seven parenteral drugs are in advanced clinical development for the treatments of infection caused by multi-drug resistant gram-negative rod, one whose phase development program was recently halted. And with that, let's take a quick review into cl uh, clinical trials. Remember that participants have to be human volunteers, receive a specific intervention for it to be a clinical trial. In phase zero, the exploratory studies involve limited human exposure to the drugs. Phase one is conducted with healthy volunteers emphasize on safety. Phase two, to gather um, preliminary data on the effectiveness of the medication. Does the medication work? Phase 3 is to gather more information about safety and effectiveness by studying different populations and different doses. And Phase 4 is usually occur after FDA approval. They would gather additional information regarding the drug safety, efficacy, and or optimal uses. These are the uh, different pharmaceutical companies in the antibiotics pipeline. Um, Abbott, AstraZeneca, Bayer, Smith, Klein, Lilly, Merck, Novartis, Otto McNeil, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Roche, and Sanofi. As you can see, very few of them have uh, any antibiotics in the pipeline that's currently in phase 2 or 3, with the exception of AstraZeneca, Smith, and Klein, and Merck. And the number is very little as well, 2 and 1. So the current antibiotics that's in the pipeline, we have, which we focus our um, top discussion today on the new oral or IV that's in phase two or three studies. We have four that are beta lactam plus beta lactamase inhibitors. We have septalosine with combination with tazobactam. We have septazidine in combo with AV bactam. Septaraline combo with AV Bactam and Imipendum in combo with MK7655. We have five that are protein synthesis inhibitors. One is an aminoclycoside called plasomycin. One is a fluorocycline, avrovacycline. One is a tetracycline, omatocycline. One is a fluoroketolized solitromycin. One is a second generation oxazolidinone tadisolate. We have two DNA synthesis inhibitors, uh, Averrofloxacin and Delafloxacin. We have two second generation glyco lipoglycopeptides, Dalbavancin or Aridavancin. So let's first uh, focus our talk on beta lactam plus beta lactamase inhibitor. Um, the first one we have for discussion is septalosine and tazobactam combo. Septalosine is developed by Cubis, also known as CXA201, show enhanced affinity for Pseudomonas originosa uh, penicillin binding protein, plus providing excellent intrinsic activity for Pseudomonas. 
Tazobactam is a beta-lactamase inhibitor with activity against class A and some class C beta-lactamase. Uh, Cephalotaxime M15 beta-lactamase as well as other um, extended spectrum beta-lactamase. The combo septalosine and tazobactam is currently in phase 3 study for complicated UTI and complicated intra-abdominal infections. In complicated UTI, it is being compared with IV fluxacin. In complicated intra-abdominal infections, the drug is being studied compare in comparison to IV meropenem. They also plan to study this in ventilator-associated bacterial pneumonia in a global trial with imipenem silastatin. As you can see, this is very exciting news for Cubis as they have the, um, received the fast track designation for um, the combo of Tazobactam and uh, Septalosine in May 7 of 2003. Next, we have Septazidim and AV Bactam. The combos show in vitro activity against most strains of Pseudomonas and multidrug resistant enterobacteriaceae, the uh, ESBL producers, and Klebsiella pneumonia producing serin carbapenemase, the KPC, but it does not have activity against the metalose beta lactamase producers, for example, the VIM or the NDM gene. It does have modest activity against Acinetobacter species. The AV Bactam, was also known as the NXL104, is a potent reversible non-beta-lactam beta-lactamase inhibitors with activity against the class A, class C beta-lactamase. As you can see, this is a structures of AV bactam in comparison to clavulanic acid and tazobactam. You can see it's very similar with a slight difference in their side change. Uh, Septacidim and AV bactam is currently in phase 3 development. Um, in the study of complicated UTI, it is being compared to doripenems, and in the study of uh, complicated intra-abdominal infection, it is being compared um, the combo plus metronidazole is being compared to meropenem. Um, AstraZeneca and Forrest also plan an open-label study of septazidine AV bactam in addition to the standard of care for treatments of septazidine resistant gram-negative bacilli, especially the ESBL gram-negative bacilli. They expect to launch this medication in 2015. As you can see, this is a new release. Uh, AstraZeneca and Forrest have planned to initiate phase 3 clinical trial for septazidine AV bactam. This is dated back in 2011 and is now still in phase 3 clinical trials. So you can see the time that it takes to develop an antibiotics and get it to approval. Next, we have septaralines and AV bactam. Septaraline and AV bactam show in vitro potency against MRSA, enterobacteriaceaceas, including ESBL and KPC gram negative bacilli. However, they have no pseudomonas or acinetobacter activity as you would expect because septaraline by itself does not have any activity against pseudomonas or acinetobacter. It is currently in phase 3 study for complicated UTI and complicated intra abdominal infections. It's also being developed by AstraZeneca and Forrest. And they expect to launch this in the year 2016. This is the structure of septriaxones. Next is cefepime. And uh, last we see, the structure of septaraline is much more complicated than the first. Um, two cephalosporin that we've seen here with the different side chain that's been highlighted in the pictures. Next we have imipenem and MK7655. MK7655 is very similar to AV Bactam. The uh, combo imipenem silastatin and MK7655 is developed by Merck. It's show in vitro activity against pseudomonas and many ESBL producer including carbapenem resistant strain, but not against the metallocarbapenemase. It have limited activity against acinetobacter as you would expect it with um, the carbapenems. Two separate phase two study of two doses, 125 and 250 milligrams of MK7655 plus imipenem silastatin plus imipenem 
uh, versus imipenem psilocetin alone for the treatment of complicated UTI and, or complicated intra-abdominal infections. And they also expect to launch this in the year 2016. This is a um, slide that's showing the similarity as well as differences between Avibactam and MK7655. As you can see, the coring look very similar, and there's a difference in the side chains of Avibactam to MK7655 right there. Moving on to the protein synthesis inhibitor class, we have placomycin, also designated ACH N490. It's the next generation neoglycoside from developed by Acogen. It has in vitro potency and in vivo activity against ESPL producing pathogens, fluoroquinolone resistant and aminoglycoside resistant gram negative bacilli, gram negative bacilli expressing the MC cephalosporinase, carbapenemase, and metallocarbapenemase. Um, not for proteus species or strain with aminoglycoside resistant metallate genes, uh, for example, the RMA or the RMTC gene. It, however, has limited activity against Pseudomonas or Acinetobacter. They also expect to launch this in the year 2016. As you can see here, this is the structure of genomycin, which derived from cesomycin, and this is the structures of plesomycin. They do share some similarity, and as expected, so their um, spectrum of activity is similar, with plesomycin is sl slightly broader. This is a new release by Acogen that they was awarded a $60 million contract options for clinical development of plasomycin. And this was released in April 2013, as you can see, this is very recent. Next we have Arav Aravacycline, also designated TP434. This is a broad spectrum fluorocycline antibiotics bind to the bacterial ribosomes, inhibit protein synthesis, they have demonstrated stability to common tetracycline resistant mechanisms, e.g. tetracycline specific efflux or ribosomal protections. They have in vitro inhibitory activity against MRSA, VRE, and KPC gram negative bacilli. Um, however, this does not have activity against Pseudomonas and modest activity against uh, Acinetobacter species. This reminds you of the um, spectrum of activity of tetracycline, very similar. The drug is currently in phase 2 study for complicated intra-abdominal infections. IVTP434 is being compared with ertapenem. Uh, the exciting uh, news about this medication is it's being developed both as an IV and oral formulations which have significant clinical implication, as you know, because currently all the antibiotics active against ESBL or KPC so are all IV. So if this available PO, that will be um, a significant difference and in terms of how we would manage these patients. They expect to launch this in the year 2016. Now this slide shows the um, similarity as well as difference of the different tetracycline that we know. Now in the upper left hand corners you see tetracyclines and um, next to it you see minocyclines slightly different a little bit more complicated in the side chains as you go and down to tetracycline the, the um, side chain is getting bigger and bigger and more bulky and TP434 is even more bulky with the nitrogen ring attached onto the side chain next we have omadacycline it's also designated PTK796, developed by Paratech. It is a protein synthesis inhibitor similar to tetracycline, and as expected, it, have, it is active again MRSA. The drug is currently in phase 2 study, comparing safety and efficacy to linezolin, which are without the estriolin for the treatment of complicated skin and skin structure infections. And omatocycline also being developed in both IV and oral formulations. Now this is the structure of omadacycline. 
as you can see, very similar to tetracyclines in many regards. This is a new release that Paratech have received FDA QIDP designation for metacycline to fast track the approval of metacycline. And you can see this was published in January of 2013, very recent as well. Next up, we have solitromycin. As the name stated, you expected this would be a um, macrolide class. It is in fact a fluoketolite available both oral and IV developed by Sembra. It has activity against azithromycin resistant bacterial strains. It did not contain the pyridine, rings, uh, pyridine side chains would interact with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that was responsible for um, the majority of the side effect that you've seen with teletromycin, such as the visual disturbance, the exacerbations of myasthenia gravis that we've seen with teletromycin. So this hopefully will be the new breakthrough for the macrolide class. It has in vitro and in vivo activity against streptococcal pneumonia, community acquired MRSA, enterococci, mycobacterium avium, legionella, chlamydia, mycoplasma, uriplasma, and gonococca gonococci as well. Um, it's currently in phase 3 trial for the treatments of complicated, uh, I'm sorry, for community acquired bacterial pneumonia. This is the structure of teletromycin in comparison to others. I'm sorry, this is the structure of solitromycin in comparison to other macrolides have been um, that's uh, available on the market. As you can see, between teletromycin, it have the um, nitrogen rings that was highlighted here, and you don't see that in the structure of solitromycin. So hopefully. Um, the side effect that associate with the ketolides won't be a problem in these medications. Next up we have Tadisolid. Tadisolid is also designated TR701 developed by Trius. It's a second generation oxazolidinone designated for improved potency, resistance, and spectrum of activity. It's currently in phase 3 trial, the established 1 trials compared to linezolid for acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections. It has favorable, favorable dosing profile in relative to linezolid is QDA versus BID uh, and also does not have the linezolid SSRI liability. The drug is de being developed as the um, one daily dosing in both IV formulations and oral formulations. As you can see, this is a structure of linezolid, and this is tadisolid. The core rings remain the same, but you can see the side chains is different. Next class, we have the DNA synthesis inhibitors. The first one is Avrofloxacin. Avrofloxacin is also designated JNJQ2, developed by FuryX. The medication has affinity for binding again both topoisomerase 2 or DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 4. It is active again MRSA, pneumococci, including the fluoroquinolone resistant variants. It is said to be 32-fold more potent than moxifloxacin, as you can understand why, because it works on both topoisomerase 2 and 4 simultaneously. The drug is currently in phase 2 trials, being compared to linezolid, um, I'm sorry, being compared with linezolid in the treatments of acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections, and of so also being compared with moxifloxacin in the treatment of severe community acquired bacterial pneumonia. There's both IV and oral formulations available. This is a new release that FuryX has also um, received qualified infection disease products and fast track designation from the um, FDA in February of 2013. Next up we have delafloxacin. 
is also designated RX3341, developed by RibX, is a novel hospital-focused fluoroquinolone with potency against a variety of fluoroquinolone-resistant bacteria. It is more potent at acidic pH. It's active against MRSA and gram-negative bacilli. In phase 2 study, being compared to linezolid with or without estrionam and vancomycin with or without estrionam for the treatment of acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections, they recently completed phase 2 in the treatment of community acquired um, bacterial pneumonia. The drug is also being developed in both oral and IV formulations. Next up, we have the cell wall agents. The lipoglycopeptides. Um, first, we have dalbavancin. It's developed by Durada. It's a second generation lipoglycopeptide. It's currently enrolling phase 3 clinical trials comparing to vancomycin with the option to switch to oral linezolid after 3 days dosing or for the treatment of acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections. Dalbavancin has a unique dosing that is only dosed twice one week apart, so you get a thousand milligram on day one and five hundred milligrams on day eight. The RADA is currently exploring uh, dalbavancin utility for the treatment of osteomyelitis. Um, next, we have oridavancin. Oridavancin is developed by the medicine company. It is a cell mice synthetic derivative of a precursor drug closely related to vancomycin. Its activity against VRE, MRSA, and gram-positive anaerobes. The medication is currently in phase 3 study of oridovancin versus vancomycin in the treatment of acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections. It also has a unique dosing profile that you only dose it once during entire durations of treatment. So this is a table that summarizes the current antibiotics pipeline, again gram-negative Bacilla in Advanced Clinical Development. This table was adapted from the CID article published in 2013. This so that you can see the summaries and spectrum of activities, again, different gram-negative infections. Um, first, we have Septalosium tazobactams. It is an anti um antibiotics as well. It has activity against ESBL no activity against the serine carbapenemase or the methylocarbapenemase. It does have activity against again, the wild type pseudomonas. In the multidrug resistant pseudomonas, the um, efficacy is they have not they don't have enough evidence to determine its efficacy. However, it does not have any activity against uh, Acinotobacter bomanii. Ceftazidine AV Bactam is also a cephalosporin and beta lactamase inhibitors combos. Also, have activities against Pseudomonas and activity against the ESBL gram negative bacilli and the serine carbapenemase uh, gram negative bacilli, but no activity against the metallo carbapenemase gram negative. It does have activity against the wild type Pseudomonas, but insufficient evidence. Uh, to determine its activity against the multidrug resistant pseudomonas, and as you can see, again, no acinetobacter activity. Septaroline avibactam is an anti MRSA cephalosporin. It does have activity against the ESBL and the serine carbapenemase gram negative, but it does not have activity against the methylocarbapenemase gram negative, or no activity against pseudomonas or acinetobacter. For the imipendum MK7655, it is a carbapendum in combo with a beta lactamase inhibitors. So as you expect, it's slightly broader. So it has activity against the ESBL, the serine carbapendamase, but no activity against the methylocarbapendamase. It does have activity against the pseudomonas, but insufficient evidence to uh, determine its efficacy in the multidrug resistant pseudomonas. Maybe have an activity against uh, Acinetobacter baumannii. As you can see with imipendum, it may or may not have activity against it. So you have to um, use acceptability testing to determine clinical efficacy. And definitely does not have activity against the multidrug-resistant Acinetobacter. 
Placomycin is an aminoglycoside. It does have activity against the ESBL and the serine carbapenemase gram-negative. Um, there's insufficient evidence to um, determine its efficacy in the metallocarbapenemase bacteria. And no activity against Pseudomonas or Acinetobacter, as you would suspect in the case of Genomycin. Aravacyclins is a fluorocyclins and it does have activity against the ESBL, the serine carbapenemase, gram negative bacilli. Not enough evidence to determine efficacy against the metallocarbapenemase, gram negative bacilli. No activity against Pseudomonas and Perhaps it might have some activity against the acinetobacters. So the missing link, none of the drugs have activity against the entire spectrum of the clinically relevant gram-negative resistance. None have activity against the metallocarbapenemase or predictable activity against acinetobacter baumannii. None addresses the issue of hospital-acquired bacterial pneumonia or healthcare-associated bacterial pneumonia or bloodstream infections. So is there a sign of hope? We, does have, we do have leaders in the government recognizing the urgency of the current situations. The FDA have invested in antibiotic-focused collaboration with the Brookings Institutions the Clinical Trial Transformation Initiative and the Biomarker Consortium of the Foundations for the NIH to assess the novel endpoints for antibacterial registration trials in treat clinical indications. The European Commission initiated a landmark public-private collaborations. The U.S. Congress also enacted a new incentives intended to advance antibiotic development in June 2012. So the ID clinician roles currently is we should preserve the current inventory of the effective antibiotic through stewardship programs. We got to optimize the use of currently available antibiotics via the improved resistant data collections, surveillance, prevention, and control measure. We have to use our judgment to utilize to the best of our ability of what is currently available to us. So in summary, we have the following gram anti-gram negative bacilli with the potential of the 2015 launch. We have septalosine tazobactam that developed by Cubis and septazidine avibactam developed by Forest AstraZeneca. The anti-gram negative with the potentials released in 2016 to 2018 including plazomycin by acrogens Aravacyclin by Tetraphase, Imipendum MK7655 by Merck. New anti-gram positives including Tadisolid developed by Trias, Dabovancin developed by Durada, Aridavancin developed by the Medicine Company, and Omatacyclin developed by Paratech. And others we have Solitromycin, Averofloxacin, and Delafloxacin. As you see, the one that stars are the one that noted available in both IV and oral formulations. And the following are my reference.